Friday, July 19th, 2019. Is it going to be a hot one today and this weekend? We're going to take a quick look at the maps, a few articles. We're going to go over uh, climate, global control trading, and what they did last month in June. And we'll take a quick look at a uh, review of Hurricane Barry, too. First, we'll start off with current weather. We got a uh, storm popping off in the Dakotas and the Great Lakes region. Take a look at the uh, live severe weather map. Got a warning there in Michigan. Here is tornado outlook for today. Uh, most likely it's looking like Minnesota, Wisconsin, Great Lakes region. 20, past 20, 48 hours tornadoes. One down in New Orleans Thursday. Few in Minnesota yesterday or Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. But here you go. Here you can see them all. We'll go ahead and close that out. Close out the outlook, the flooding, major flooding in South Dakota, all the way down. You know, Missouri's still flooded. Uh, Louisiana, it's dealing from flooding from Hurricane Barry. Here I made an album uh, from the 9th through the 16th. And if you watched it, you know, a lot of this vapor was generated from land pushed out until they got it sucked up into a vortex. Now they were holding it in place there for a while. Right, I got this video. Yeah, they were superheating it. If you go over my last video, I kind of covered that. Holding it in place, you could see where they were targeting it. Feeding it from Texas. You could see real good in this one where they were targeting it. Yeah, even at one time it was like a zigzag pattern, almost looked like a yin-yang. Yin -yang. Here it was pumping up from uh, Houston and south of Houston. I think this video kind of covered that pretty well. Here's the out in front of it, the leading edge, pump vapor up. And then right here it's coming up from Houston, feeding into it. There was a stream. There's a stream. But yeah, I'll leave the link to this below. So you can go through it and look yourself. But my last video on it pretty much covers the whole storm. Okay, now we're going to get into... Oh, here's an article came out the 15th. Humans may be accidentally geoengineering the oceans. Iron particles released by industrial activities are falling into the seas in greater quality, qualities, qu yeah, quantities than previously thought. All right, and if you don't know what uh, it's called, iron, where is it at? All right, here, in fact, this phenomenon is the basis for controversial, controversial geoengineering concept called iron fertilization. Okay, and they're talking about dumping iron into the ocean to bloom up phytoplankton, right? And then a couple days after this, this article came out. Oceans need geoengineering, not the atmosphere, right? Oh, God. I, I mean, can't we... Wouldn't it be considered at this point we're geoengineering planet, aka climate change? Wouldn't we want to reverse geoengineer or just stop? I mean, take a good look around, look at your skies. <laughs> but, anyways, yeah, enough of that. Now, look at uh, yeah, here's for today. Here's local if you're local, 96 today, 97, 95, and then a break on Monday. Look at the misery index. And 
boy, oh boy, that guy said, look, two-thirds of the country. So keep your animals in, stay hydrated if you're going to be out, etc. Here we take a look at the GFS model, see what, what, what they got going on here. Enough of that. Look at the flooding. Wildfire maps. Last I calculated last week, over half a million acres have burned just in two weeks. So I guess in a month. I think like a half a million, million more since then. It's insane. Alaska is on fire. Just throwing that in there. And the West Coast as usual. Huh. Now, we're going to get into. Uh, first, we'll take a look at the next red. Here we got this digital ping signature over Nebraska. This can either, for this region, there's a Super Darn in Kansas, Fort Hayes, and there's all these wind farms that can also cause interference. And when we see all these little circle donut things, this is uh, excited nanoparticulate. Anyways, we're going to get into climate global control trading. They use it's uh, cryptocurrency. You invest in cryptocurrency to pay f you, or you use what's called a climate cron to pay for barrels of water and how do they do this well by steering uh storm systems they call it uh, uh transferring atmospheric air and rivers but anyways here they're talking about we've managed to change the route of a cyclone and lead its remnants to the emirates which led to rain and a decrease of temperature by nine degrees right here they're talking about under our control turned away from india and moved to the west and you can read more into this about how they the one pdf they sh they show you exactly everything they did they got it all mapped out pages and pages but anyway so i covered this a couple weeks ago they did this uh june it was a good portion of June that they were steering this storm. But anyways, I've, last what day was this? Yeah, earlier this week. India's latest water cr or crisis. 600 million people struggle, struggle with drought. Okay. Now, I'm not sure how to say this word. Ma, Maharashtra. I don't know, but this province or country or county, whatever they call them over there, is uh, they are in a water crisis, right? And if you look where, I got Google Earth up, where this is right here, okay? Here's where they steered the storm over to here, right? Away from India. If you're in the weather modification, I'm sure you know what the N mod is. But what they're stating here is that they say innovative technology for weather management fully complies with the Environmental Modification Convention, formerly the Convention on the Pro Prohibition of Military or Any Other Hostile Use of Environmental Modification, which is one of the main UN documents prohibiting its partic participants from military or any other hostile influence on the environment through the deliberate management of natural processes in the biosphere, hydrosphere, in the Earth's atmosphere, and near-Earth space. Well, I, I don't know about you guys, but here's the storm. Steering a storm away from a drought-stricken area
That seems rather hostile, if you ask me. You could say, call it thievery. You know, this could have brought some relief to this region in India. But did it? No. Because someone steered the storm away. Here's my weather mod map. Now this does not include your 43,000 flights over the United States every day, the shipping out in the ocean or the oil rigs off of Texas and Louisiana, but just about everything else, wind farms, uh, power plants, next rads, super darns, we got some space fence, all these different devices, this is a grid, okay? This was uh, put out over the past 100 years, and I'm pretty sure when you look at it and how it's set up, it there was intention. But anyways, just a quick update, and especially on this and the NMOD, they are admitting or at least claiming that they steered this storm away from India. And like I said, this would be weather warfare. But, you know, that's just my opinion. And, you know, <laughs> to me that is weather warfare. And I'm sure... Because the UAE does a lot of weather modification. There's several different companies. I'm sure this isn't the first time that they've been uh, transferring atmospheric moisture away from India to make their desert green over here. They've made some regions green. They've turned a desert into a forest. But other than that... Uh, you want to learn more i'd suggest this interview with mr david miles of miles research a company uh, who claims they can steer atmospheric rivers and here's more jim did a video also on uh climate global control trading i'd watch this too just to learn more about these companies other than that uh like going to be hot today if you're in the United States, so stay hydrated, and we will check back in at a later 